Hi there. This is Dr. Cindy Banier, Democratic candidate for U.S. House of Representatives, Florida 19, and this is Perspective. For this edition, we're going to be talking about our water. For us here in Southwest Florida, we know that water is life. It brings us beauty, it fuels our economy, and it provides us recreation. It's the reason that we're here. We need to protect our water, and that means preserving our way of life for today and into the future. Let's take a closer look at our water and our economy. Southwest Florida's economy relies on tourism and residential guests. This keeps our businesses, especially our small retail businesses, the mom and pop shops on the beach and small restaurants going. There are over 70,000 retail jobs here in Southwest Florida. And we also need to keep our water protected to protect our fishing and shellfish industry that is important for those involved in it, as well as those who consume those products like you and me. We have issues with harmful algal blooms here coming down the Caloosahatchee River and affecting coastal Southwest Florida and our estuaries. These harmful algal blooms like red tide and blue-green algae drive tourists and seasonal residents away and hurt small businesses. With 118.5 million people visiting Florida each year, bringing $111.7 billion into our state economy, there is a lot at stake here when we talk about preserving our water to ensure that our economy is booming. We saw the negative effects of harmful algal blooms, specifically here in 2018. Rotting fish, the terrible smell, and people not coming to visit our beautiful beaches. And it caused a lot of pain for the people working in small businesses and the small businesses themselves. We cannot allow this to continue to happen. We have to be especially cautious here in Southwest Florida because we are prone to hurricanes. Hurricanes accelerate the derogation of our water. It does this because it has negative effects and it releases more pollution into our storm water and that feeds these harmful algal blooms in the future. So we have to be particularly concerned as a hurricane prone coastal area. Just because hurricanes and red tide are natural occurrences doesn't mean that we should ignore their effects or fail to prepare and mitigate their negative consequences. Just because they're natural causes, do not ignore these issues such as hurricanes and then the pollution and the harmful algal blooms that come from that terrible combination. According to the Calusa Water Keepers, Lee County had the largest water body impairment raise from 2018 to 2020. Now, what does this mean? We saw the highest level of increase of contaminants in our water. These contaminants come from human pollution. That's poop, everybody. Development, auto exhaust, fertilizers, as well as agricultural and cattle ranching. These pollutants cause unacceptable damage to our water, and we should all be concerned. Unfortunately, there little has been done in the way of action to protect our economy and our health from dirty water. Even when we have health advisories like we've seen recently in Billy's Creek and Franklin Lock, people in the community fail to recognize the harmful effects because there is not a good amount of communication in regards to these public health issues and what the exposure to toxic and disease carrying water can mean to them. We must continue to act to, pre pre to protect our water. I have been working to protect our water here in Southwest Florida since I moved here early in the 2000s. In 2014, I came together to work with many people from our community, stakeholders, including businesses, public officials, and nonprofit organizations to see what we can do about our water. I authored a series of reports in relation to this work. And even back then, we're talking about the very same things, making sure that we have advocates on this side of the Caloosahatchee 
so that we are not just getting the dump from Lake Okeechobee and that we need to have natural solutions to help clean our water. In order to continue to improve our water quality, there, there are some actions that we absolutely must take. First and foremost, we need to hold polluters accountable. This includes current polluters and historic pollution that is lying on the bottom of Lake Okeechobee. We need strong regulation in the state of Florida with a political will to actually litigate against the polluters and ensure that they are paying and doing the right things to ensure that their pollution is taken care of and our waters are clean. We cannot allow the legacy to pollution to continue. We also need to continue to fund and implement, implement the Everglades restoration projects that have been approved. We have a good start on this with many of the SERP, uh, SERP projects being funded and then subsequently funded within the state as well as our uh, federal dollars. But we need to do more. We need to ensure that the funding continues for these projects and that they are actually implemented in the way that the scientists agree is best for our water. We need more local control of Lake Okeechobee releases. Right now, water management Officials are looking at updating the LOSM, L-O-S-M, the Lake Okeechobee System Operating Manual. One thing that we need to know about this is we need it to be equitable. Like I said, we have been fighting since 2014 here in Southwest Florida so that we are not just getting the dump from Lake Okeechobee, that it's going down both coasts and that there is control and some say from us here, the stakeholders in Southwest Florida, when these water releases are going down the Caloosahatchee. We need to continue to fund quality, water quality research and research onto harmful algal blooms and their mitigation through nonprofit organizations and institutions like the Calusa Water Keepers and the Florida Gulf Coast University Water School. We need more and better information so that we can make better policy to keep people healthy and safe, as well as to keep our economy going. And finally, we need to be transparent about health issues and economic issues, and we need to quickly enact solutions related to keeping our water clean. It's time to end the public officials mantra of everything is just all right. It's simply not true. We should demand transparency and demand clean water. Now is the time to act before it's too late for our current economy and for our future for our economy and our kids. Thank you for joining me here today for our talk on our water on Lee Pitts Live. Now back to him. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production. Hello, Southwest Florida. Thanks for watching Lee Pitts Live. Of course, I'm Lee Pitts. I hope you enjoy that particular show, but you can always catch us here on YouTube. Just click on the subscribe button down there. That way you can get your Lee Pitts Live on demand when you want it and how you want it. We also encourage you to watch our show on Fox 4 and connect with us on all, all our social media platform. Just type in Lee Pitts Live.